Good morning, everyone. I am proud to stand today alongside Senate President Pasadomo, Representative Fine, Senator Book, and our other colleagues behind me here to say that Florida stands with Israel. Today, the Senate President and I have filed a joint proclamation condemning the barbar barbaric attack by Hamas and unequivocally supporting the right of the state of Israel to exist as a sovereign nation and to defend itself in this moment. We know the Iranian regime funds Hamas and assists other terror groups. Therefore, we support Governor DeSantis' legislative proposal announced last week to sanction Iran. The relationship between Florida and Israel has never been stronger. In 2019, Florida participated in its biggest trade mission to Israel in our state's history, which led to greater cultural, business, and academic ties. Last year alone, we had $650 million in bilateral trade with Israel, and they are our 19th largest investor in our state. Our relationship with Israel is mutually beneficial. When Champlain Towers at Surfside near Miami tragically collapsed two years ago, Israel sent an elite search and rescue team to save Floridians. Our record of legislative actions demonstrate our commitment to Israel and the Jewish community in our state. We enacted legislation to combat anti-Semitism around our state, including at state universities. We have provided $18 million in support for security for our Jewish day schools. We have prohibited state investment in companies that discriminate against Israel. In the coming days, while the support from other nations may recede, our support for Israel will never waver. If you stand for freedom, if you stand for peace, you should stand with Israel and with Florida's Jewish community today and in the future. We are with him until the end. And now I'd like to invite Senate President Pasadomo to the lectern to offer some remarks. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for being here today. I am proud to stand with Speaker Renner, Leader Book, and so many of our legislative colleagues to show our support for Israel and to condemn the horrific attack by Hamas. As a state government, under the leadership of Governor DeSantis, we are doing everything within our authority to protect Floridians from the dangerous regimes that fund these terrorist operations. Florida has always had a special relationship with Israel. While we cherish the alliance between our governments, we also recognize the bonds of family and friendship that link so many Floridians to the Israeli people. Last week, I had the opportunity to join Leader Book, President Pro Tem Baxley, Senator Berman, and Senator Polsky for a final scribing ceremony for a new Torah for the Jewish Center near FSU's campus, which was destroyed by fire last year. It was a coming together, it was a new birth for the facility amid, amongst the tragedy that we're suffering today. It was a meaningful occasion to come together to show our support for the Jewish community here in Tallahassee and across the state. As it is important that the Jewish community has a strong presence in our capital city, especially during this most difficult time. We are proud to stand with our Jewish brothers and sisters to speak out, not only against the horrific terror attacks in Israel, but also against the all too frequent acts of anti-Semitism and hatred we see here in our own country. Florida is no place for anti-Semitism, hatred, or violence of any kind. We condemn these acts and we pray for Israeli victory and for peace. I'd like to introduce uh, Leader Book, who will also make some remarks. Thank you, Madam President. As the Democratic leader of the Florida Senate, I proudly stand with this bipartisan coalition to show the state of Florida stands with Israel. As a proud Jewish American and one of only three Jewish members of the Florida Senate, I watched, as everyone did, the terrible horrors that Hamas unleashed on Israel with devastation. Parachuting from the sky, terrorists descended upon young, peaceful concert goers. They murdered grandmothers, Holocaust survivors, entire families gone, multiple generations slaughtered, raping, kidnapping, cold-blooded murder, complete desecration of bodies, the true definition of a pogrom. 
It is pure evil. There is no other way to describe these acts. And as we mourn the tremendous losses we have suffered, we will not be silent. The Jewish nation and Israeli people will not be defeated by terrorists with hate in their hearts. We have lived through great losses before, and though this is the greatest mass murder of Jewish people since the Holocaust, make no mistake, we will survive this too. Because in times of tragedy and war, our unity is our strength. Our shared Jewish values of love and peace and care for others is our strength. As such, I support, I know we support global calls for innocent civilian lives to be spared, both in the Middle East and here at home, with unacceptable and even deadly acts of both anti-Semitism and Islamophobia on the rise. Hamas must stop using civilians as human shields because Israel is absolutely, let me be clear, absolutely justified in its defense of the Israeli people. Here in Florida and across the globe, we will have hope and we will pray. And we will stand united across party lines in loving support of Israel and her people, in loving support of innocence everywhere. Hamas terrorists will not win because we will not let them. Yesterday, today, and for all time, we stand with Israel. Am Yisrael Chai. Thank you, Leader Buck. We know that through cooperation we can accomplish great things, and no member has worked harder in our House chamber than Chairman Randy Fine on this issue, and it is large part because of his work that we can stand here today with Israel. Randy understands that the foundation of our friendship with Israel is our common belief in freedom, safety, intelligence, education, and technology. Thank you for your good work, Representative Fine. Mr. Speaker and, and Madam President, thank you for organizing this today. Uh, Paul, I'm profoundly honored to represent not only the House, but the Jewish community as we stand together. I've tried to speak for them for seven years. I've clearly not done a good enough job. Um, I start with an apology. I'm not myself. Jews are not ourselves. We are not okay. Most of us have hardly slept since last Saturday. We have family in Israel. We know someone who's serving in the military. We know someone who died. For Israel, 10-7 was the equivalent proportionally not to one 9-11, or two, or even 10. Imagine 40,000 had died in New York that day. Almost 200 people have been taken hostage, 200. Think about that. We don't see them on live news videos because they're being hidden, used as human shields. Imagine what's being done to them right now. Until last Saturday, for most of us in this room, the Holocaust was something that existed in history books and museums, in black and white photographs when we watched Schindler's List and we read Anne Frank's diary, but not anymore. It turns out that the Holocaust never ended. It just went into hibernation. In the past week, we have seen things that have shaken the very foundation of what it means to be a human being. I can't wrap my head around what could drive a person to take a knife and cut the head off a baby. Can you? Can you understand what kind of person would burn an elderly person alive? That happened. What kind of man rapes a girl as she lays next to her dead friends? When I try to sleep, I think of the babies I played with last December when I toured a kibbutz on the border with Gaza. I wonder which ones were beheaded. That's the kibbutz that I visited. If I think about it too much, I feel like I'm going crazy. And I don't know if it's from anger or grief or just questioning how this world can actually exist this way. If I do fall asleep, I dream of the video of two little boys being taken hostage by monsters. I haven't seen their faces, but I saw their hair. Two little redheads. If you come to my office, you can see a picture of two that I have at home that have that exact same red hair. They want to kill them too. 
What we have seen is horrific, scarring, traumatizing. But I ask you to look at the pictures. Do not look away. We preserved the Nazi concentration camps in order to memorialize the horrors that man can do. Don't look away. In some ways, this was worse. These terrorists wore GoPro cameras. They filmed their barbarity live, their animalism. They were proud of what they had done. Do not look away. I ask you to sear it into your minds, to change who you are and what you think, because we have to face a truth that many of us have refused to for far too long. We are not one giant human family. There are monsters among us. This was not done by one crazy person or even 19 as happened at 9-11. Thousands, thousands entered Israel 10 days ago with one single purpose. It wasn't to free Gaza. It was to see how many children they could kill, how many families they could destroy, how much suffering and barbarity they could inflict. That wasn't the collateral damage of war. That was their goal. But the monsters aren't just over there. They are right here. Today, a group of them will gather not far from here, and they will call the beheading of babies a great win. They will celebrate it. They will justify it. The monsters aren't just over there. Turn on the news, and you will see both in this country and around the world the largest scale demonstration of anti-Semitism in the history of the world. They no longer feel the need to hide their desire to kill Jews. They scream it in front of the camera. You all need to understand that Jews, not just in Israel, but right here in Florida, do not feel safe today. We are a people that has been kicked out of every place we've ever lived for 2,000 years. Every single place. There are Jews that you represent right now, here in Florida, including this one, whose children secretly packed a suitcase under their beds, wondering, will they have to run? But more than tired, more than heartbroken, more than scared, I'm angry. Because while we are here to stand with Israel, let me make one thing very clear. This is not war against a different people in a faraway land. It was an attack on all of us. There is a slogan in radical Islam that the terrorists sometimes use. Today, we come for the Saturday people. Tomorrow, we come for the Sunday people. There are only 16 million Jews in the world. There are fewer Jews than there are residents of Beijing, China. We celebrate the Sabbath on Saturday. Maybe one of you can tell me who celebrates it on Sunday. I'm exceedingly grateful for my colleagues who stand here. For most of them, this is hard to understand. The biggest problem with anti-Semitism is actually not the anti-Semites. It's with those who aren't, because those who aren't anti-Semites don't understand how people can feel this way. It's the most common thing I've heard as I've run these bills for seven years. From my colleagues, they say, who actually believes this stuff? but we've learned that they do. I wanna share just one story that might help explain it. A story you haven't heard yet about a little Jewish girl who survived, a three-year-old named Lizzie. Lizzie was one of 11 children in a family in her village when on that fateful day, the barbarians arrived at the gate. They were playing outside. Out of nowhere, they showed up. As the monsters were running at them, weapons flashing in the sun, Lizzie and her brothers and sisters and her parents ran into their home. They tried to barricade the door, but the terrorists knocked it down. With nowhere to run, Lizzie, her 10 siblings, and her parents piled on top of each other, trying to protect themselves. Lizzie, the smallest, ended up on the bottom, her parents on top. And over what felt like eternity, Lizzie listened to her family get slaughtered. She heard the knives plunge into the bodies of her parents. She heard the screams of her brothers and sisters as they died. Their blood poured into her eyes, her ears, her nose. She thought she was going to drown in it. When the monsters had finished their butchery, thinking they'd killed them all, they left. Lizzie survived. Eight of her older Jewish brothers and sisters, her mother and her father, they were true human shields, real human shields, who sacrificed their own lives to save Lizzie and her siblings, who sat at the bottom of this pile of death. But with the weight of hundreds of pounds on top of them, it took Lizzie and her brother hours to disentangle themselves 
from the bodies of their family. They just weren't strong enough to move it away. Lizzie remembered the heat leaving their bodies as she lied there. As they grew cold, it felt like their souls were moving on. But Lizzie survived. Not in Israel, but in Russia. Not 10 days ago, but more than 100 years ago. You see, the armies of darkness have tried to exterminate my people since time immemorial. Lizzie survived. She came to America, and in this country, she married and had two Jewish children, one of whom had two more. My grandmother would remind me of her story every time I had to deal with my own battles with anti-Semitism. She would remind me that I wasn't special. I was just a Jew. The sad thing is this story is not unique. Last Saturday was just the latest stop on a 3,000 year journey of Jewish hatred. From slavery in Egypt, to the Spanish Inquisition, to the pogroms, to the Holocaust. And I could tell you dozens more if we had all day. Every Jew in this room has a story like mine. Ask them and they will tell you. They will tell you of the dozens if not hundreds of cousins that might have been brought into this world had they not died. There are hundreds of millions of Jews who have never been born. But 16 million is still too many for the monsters among us. We have been persecuted since the days of Exodus. The story of Passover, the story of Jews escaping from slavery in Egypt, of surviving chase from Pharaoh's army, of spending 40 years in the desert searching for the land God promised us, Israel. When we end our seders each year, we end them with a simple saying, next year in Jerusalem. For over a thousand years, that was just a hope and a dream, but not anymore. Since 1948, no longer. We now have Israel. Never again will Jews be defenseless. Never again will we go to our slaughter. Never, ever again. God knew this. And in one of the five most sacred books in our faith, Deuteronomy, a book that is part of the Christian Bible as well, he told us what to do. When you go out to war against your enemies and you see a people more numerous than you, you shall not be afraid of them, for the Lord your God is with you. Hear, O Israel, today you are approaching the battle against your enemies. Let your hearts not be troubled. You shall not be afraid, and you shall not be alarmed, and you shall not be terrified. For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. God is with us. We are not afraid. We know we will win. We will win together. You are with us. We all share this verse as well from Psalms. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. The attack in Israel was not an attack on a country. It was an attack on a people. It was an attack on me, on Lauren, on every Jew in this room, but it was an attack against all of us. When you stand with Israel, you stand with us. You stand with the Jews of this state, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and the namesake of my youngest son, or my oldest son, Jacob. All of you descended from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as well. May God bless Israel, may God bless her friends, and may God smite the enemies of us all. Well, thank you to everyone, and we're not going to take questions today. I would just close by saying that this is not the end of our commitment, but merely the beginning. And I want to thank all the members from the House and Senate for their commitment to Israel and the Jewish people here in Florida. We, as I said, uh, stand with them and will never, ever waver on their behalf. Thank you very much.